Okay, a few uh, weeks ago, my wife and I did a study. Uh, she actually joined me here on camera, and uh, we did a study on the thing of the satanic Ignatian self-righteousness, and specifically talking about mind control, uh, that there are ways that people go through different types of mind control. And I mentioned a woman that uh, has become very famous for being a mind control victim that supposedly came out of mind control, but I'm going to tell you today she didn't totally come out of it, and her name is Kathy O'Brien. Kathy O'Brien, excuse me. Not Brian, you know, not, not my name, O'Brien. And her husband's name is Mark Phillips. And the two of them wrote two different books. They wrote one, the first one was called Trance, and the second one was Access Denied, right here. Just got done reading this book, and I just want to caution people uh, about this because there's a very dangerous philosophy that goes on with a lot of the patriot movement. And I've held to the, the belief for a long time now that the patriot movement is actually going to be the Antichrist system. And uh, you know, the, the old good cop, bad cop type of a thing. But a lot of this stuff, uh, you know, I've seen this thing, part of the design of Satan, because that's what this whole thing, you know, and they don't believe that Satan is a, is a real being. You know, he's just a kind of a, some weaker minded religious people believe in him, I guess. But uh, Satan's design is to counterfeit religion with Catholicism or any other Protestant cult out there. And give you a really, really, really bad upbringing in that so that then that turns you against Jesus Christ because people associate, you know, Jesus Christ with religion. And so that turns them against Jesus Christ. That's what happened here, okay? Which is kind of funny because it's like you still haven't come out of the mind control. You might have come out from the CIA and being used in governmental operations and drug running and whatever else, but uh, you're still under Satan's mind control. I'm going to show you that here real quick. Just a couple quotes here. Um, some of the stuff in here is just incredible. <clears throat> here we have page 343. Down there you can see it. And here it says, uh, whoop, I'm, I'm zoomed in too far. Let me Let me back up a little bit. Come on here. Okay, sorry about that. Page 343, it says, That is interesting, Mark said. Sir Francis Bacon is rumored to have written Shakespeare, edited, edited the King James Version of the Bible, and brought Freemasonry into this country while it was being founded. This is a total New Age bunch of nonsense. Okay, This thing of Sir Francis Bacon secretly was the one who edited the King James Bible, and it's actually just his book. Um News flash for you there, stupid New Agers. Uh, the King James Version was not written in 1604 to 1611 out of thin air. It's translated from ancient manuscripts. Okay, do you understand that? And uh, it was actually 95% of William Tyndale's work, which was back in the early 1500s. And if you look at one of Martin Luther's uh, Bibles, it's very similar in, in most passages. There are a few small differences that I've heard of, but most passages, Martin Luther's Bible, again, written in the early 1500s, almost 100 years before the King James Bible, Martin Luther's Bible matches most of the readings in here. So I guess, you know, according to these New Age wing nuts, Sir Francis Bacon was probably around there too and edited Martin Luther's Bible and William Tyndale's Bible as well. You know, and and... Again, think of the philosophy here. This occult New Age master, this Sir Francis Bacon, you know, he had a hand in the King James Version. Why on earth would a New Ager want to do a thing like that? Lead to the greatest soul winning, the greatest missionary movement, more people doing things for the Lord, the work of the Lord, as a result of the King James Bible, but some occultist had a hand in it? You see how stupid these people are? And you say, what's the motivation? The motivation is because they, they come out with this nonsense because the Bible tells the very specific events for the future, that things are going to get worse. And so they say, well, see, the New Agers, they conspired to do that thing. They, they wrote this like that so people wouldn't fight for their freedom and they wouldn't unite together, you know. What a bunch of nonsense. <clears throat> but you see, here on this page, he says it's rumored. Now watch this. Watch this little Jesuitical mind control trick. Rumored there, Sir Francis Bacon's influence on both the Constitution and Bible. 
Wait a second. You just said the page before, a few paragraphs earlier, that it was rumored. Now it's presented as fact. Got to love that little mind control tactic there. How ridiculous. But uh, here they say, which is why we need a worldwide spiritual evolution. Look at that. Right there. That's new age. That's Satanism. Ye can be as gods. And that's Mark that said that. And then you get down here. All of humankind must exert evolution now, I suggested. The path to collective conscious evolution is within... It is within all of us all to gather the strength of spirit necessary to evolve. World peace begins with freedom within, excuse me, world peace begins within, freedom begins within, and wisdom begins within. Uh, no, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Okay? Oh, no, it begins within. Oh, then you can be as gods, knowing good and evil. See? Satanism. So they come out, oh, we're telling the truth about mind control. Telling the truth to people and then diverting them right back into the system of Satanism. Nice how that works. Next page, or page uh, 346 here. Kelly, this is Kathy O'Brien's daughter, is the brightest shining example of spiritual evolution I've ever known, Mark told me. There is no excuse for anybody anywhere to not wake up, face the truth, and evolve. Technology doesn't preclude the spiritual. It should emerge with truth as people reclaim their lives. That's funny. Like the mark of the beast. That's a good thing, though, you know. You are the brightest shining example of reverberating evolution I'll ever know in this life. You know, wow, reverberating evolution. I guess I'm not uh, reverberating evolution right now. Because I'm saying man gets worse. Every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Yeah. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. The Bible is such a negative, nasty book. It must have been written by occult Satanists. And it's funny, too, because, you know, what's the proof that they have that, that Sir Francis Bacon wrote the King James Bible? All a whole bunch of occult writers. So you go to the occult to prove that the Bible, the Word of God, was written by occultists. That's brilliant. That's real brilliant. Down here, page 347, it says, The church here says spirit is God and soul is his spirit in us. What do you say, I ask? This is Kathy O'Brien having a conversation with her daughter, Kelly. That God is love energy, which is the same love energy shining through me. I like your definition, I exclaimed. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> I like love energy because it is a universal, universal name for God that crosses all religions and names, including Buddha, Allah, and the rest. I'm, expecting, I'm expected in the church so I sit there and go within myself and think. It's up, to, it's up to people to save themselves. Some people still need religion. You bunch of satanic filthy. The Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you. Good night. And if you believe in this stuff, if you're out there and you're a truther and you believe this, man, you better flee from it and flee to Jesus Christ. He is your only hope. Good night. I didn't say flee to church or to some religious cult. I said flee to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, because I guarantee you, if you were put through mind control in your past or other kinds of things like that or were molested or whatever else, Jesus Christ never did one thing to you. All right. God allows bad things to happen because he gives man a free will. But he sent his son to die for your sins and he paid for your sins and you can be saved and go to heaven and live forever with him. Whosoever will, let him call upon the name of the Lord. Okay? Look at this. Being here has given me insight into how some people still need religion. And then she says I, I, you know, how she was astounded by Kelly's spiritual evolution. Sure. Uh, yeah, over here she mentions Alex Jones. You know. Yep. Talked about Dr. Stanley Monteith is a is a uh, real practicing Christian. It's kind of funny because I had a sister the one time send him um, my videos, links to my videos where I was rebuking Billy Crone. Billy Crone's a little false prophet, new versionist. And uh, Stan Monteith said that I was just trying to seek publicity or trying to, you know, it was a publicity stunt on my part. <laughs> sure. Right. Um, just trying to see what else here. 
Yeah, I like this one here too. Knowledge is our only defense against mind control, I said. Uh, not Jesus Christ, in other words. Just uh, your own knowledge that you can come up with. I guess I'm a weak-minded individual because I actually believe in God. You know, I don't believe in evolution. That everything came from nothing accidentally. You know? Uh... trying to see here yeah I like this one too it's talking about harp and it says this is page 373 it says 30 million years of ecological balance has been disrupted <laughs> okay you know uh, well if the world was here for 30 million years um, how would you explain erosion on the mountains when they have eroded flat by now you say oh no that they, they've been eroding eroding for 30 million years Wow that's amazing how, how tall were those mountains 30 million years ago? They could withstand 30 million years of erosion. And uh, the earth is, you know, uh, the sun is losing energy, you know. So go back 30 million years, you know, and how hot would that sun have been? Well, let's not be confused with facts now. Uh, down here further on the page it says, Wisdom naturally spans all language barriers through collective conscious spiritual evolution. In order to gain eyes to see and ears to hear from other walks of life beyond our own spiritual evolution must begin within. <laughs> Acting on spiritual evolutions, wisdom we can all learn from each other and unite in purpose, light, years ahead of political and religious differences. Uh, what is the Antichrist system? Uniting all world religions. Isn't that what she's saying here in the book? But she's come out of mind control, you see. She's here to bring you freedom. No, she's here to bring you slavery. Enslavement. Down here it says, Religion's pious differences have not yet confused their pure soul wisdom and unconditional love. Okay, <laughs> religion's pious differences. Sure. As I looked into the children's eyes, I saw a, bright, a future bright with promise. Not according to the Bible. And it's funny how these these New Age wing nuts they'll they'll you know go and they'll say oh GMO's evil and harp's bad and and geoengineering and all this stuff is really bad it's destroying the planet and then they'll flip right around and say but I think we're looking at a positive future. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sure, sure. Maybe if you're doing enough. Uh, drugs or something you can just live in an opium pipe dream down here a little bit further it says for over a decade I have noticed more and more children being born with love's wisdom in their soulful eyes is humankind genetically evolving to save the species it just sounds like a lot like Alex Jones is this an indication that the spiritual evolution has already commenced bigger than life could it be that evolution has already occurred in the timeless spiritual dimension to be realized on earth in these tumultuous times the answer is within. Look within yourself to realize your own truth. Spiritual evolution already is. All we need to do is realize it. Oh, it's funny. Uh, oh, yeah, here's this is, this is a good one, too. They're in Japan, you know, and that's uh, page 377. Looking into the children's eyes here, it says, Looking into their eyes, I saw our future unless we wake up and evolve to stop the warring. <laughs> yeah, sure. Down here it talks about peaceful evolution. Wait a second. Um, what is the primary tenet of evolution? Survival of the fittest. Hey, man, war is what you need for evolution. I mean, evolution, the, the, the basic needed factor for evolution is death. That's the best way. So how can you have peaceful evolution? Peaceful evolution is an oxymoron. Peace slows down evolution. I mean, hey man, if we're going to evolve and stuff, we got some really undesirable people that we need to get rid of. I mean, come on now. Let's see if there's anything else in this nutty nonsense that I want to talk about.
down here on page 384. I don't know specifically what the future holds, Mark admitted, yet I am confident it is all in order and that success is absolute for all of us. Okay, again, uh, how do you believe in evolution and say that success is absolute for everybody? Um, that kind of goes against the philosophy of evolution, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, you know, and here they were talking about being in, uh, was it Fiji or something? Yeah, Fiji. And they say here on this page, this is page 386. We took it in, took it with us in our beings, forever changed by the knowing that uh, heaven on earth was a reality. I've been to some beautiful places on earth myself, you know, but uh, there ain't nothing on this earth that can be compared to heaven. Okay. I hath not seen, neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for them that love him. Uh, there's nothing on this planet that's like heaven. Um, but, uh, down here it says, page 391, we have a choice. Either we spiritually evolve together or our planet's revolutions will spin us into violent destruction and Mother Nature will buck us all off this planet. Exert evolution now and please peacefully assume your victory. <laughs> yeah. And as I've stated in other uh, studies, because I always try to be very, very uh, scholarly in everything, there is one other way to say all that stuff. And it goes like this. You take your, your finger, your pointer finger on your right hand, you put it to your lips, and you go like this. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Welcome to the nut farm. All the clowns aren't in the circus. What a bunch of stupid nonsense, you know. And why? Because she was messed with with Catholics and all these other religious cults out there. So you turn on Jesus Christ. You say the Bible was written by a cultist. I don't believe it. I believe that I believe in man. You know, man's going to, we're going to succeed. You know, we haven't been able to succeed in 6,000 years of history, but we're going to do it this time. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. Personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That is your only hope for the future. Okay. Um, the worst time period in history of the world is coming, is yet to come. There's going to be a new world order, and it's going to be this philosophy right there that these people are pushing. It's going to be that philosophy of uniting all religions, and then let's all put aside our differences, and peaceful evolution, and soul, you know, collective consciousness, and all this other junk. It's going to be all that stuff right there is the new world order. And your only way out of it right now is by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Personal relationship not through religion, not through Babel buildings that we call churches. All right. Go to my main channel page. There's a salvation message. Watch it. And you can see from the Bible how to be saved. You better get saved. Times are going to get worse, not better.